Hello everybody, it's 123 Stealth Bomber here and I'm going to bring you another tutorial on the Assault Squad Editor and today we're going to talk about how to use the camera or more specifically this little icon right here as I like to call the cinematic camera. Um, this is very useful for many things. I'm making cool videos, cinematic scenes, all that stuff. So we're going to jump right in. Okay, so if you haven't already, what we're going to do is click on the camera icon in F3 mode. And then what's going to happen is it's going to be all blank. And right click on the top in the top gray box and you're going to hit add and insert. So and uh, give it a new name. So let's just call this one start in my case. Um, and then we can start beginning with the keyframes. As you notice, this pops up, which is keyframes. And this is the camera movement itself. So where now in order to start this off, you're going to move your camera to the starting location of what you want to have it as. So in my case, I'm going to start my camera, say, right here. Okay, and what you're going to do is once you're ready, you're going to right click on the gray box where under keyframes and add an insert. And what's going to happen is it's going to create a keyframe and this one's called keyframe zero under in zero seconds. And when I move my cursor, you'll notice um, there is this green line indicating the exact position of where I put the keyframe, the exact altitude and all that other stuff. So if I double click on the keyframe, you'll notice it'll bring me back to the same location. Uh, so in case if I need to know where it is, because you can have multiple keyframes, um, I believe as many as you want. I don't think there's any limit. So sometimes it gets very confusing. So if you want to go back to a certain one, you just double click on it. Uh, if you want to update this, since if you didn't like it, you instead of deleting the entire thing, you can just update it by pressing the update button and it'll update it and then you can move your cursor and we'll see how it changed its location so I'm gonna start my cursor about right here so I'm gonna update this again now what we're gonna do is when we if let's say if we started this to script this right now what would happen is it would just stay right here this is all we would say for like about like less than a second we don't want that. We want the camera to move. So in order to do that, we need to insert another keyframe. So in order to do that, move your camera, well, yeah, your main camera, and move it into the next position that you want it in. So say like right here is pretty good. Let's and to add in another keyframe, you just right click in the open box and add an insert. Now you'll notice if I move my camera, now there's two green lines: the original one where I made my first one, and here's my second one. Uh, the yellow line will indicate that they're connected. And the blue line uh, will indicate the actual movement of the camera between each frame. So if we hit preview, it'll show um, the movement between those two. And as you can see, that went way too quick. So these two little numbers right here, these mean how many seconds it takes to get from one frame to the other. So we don't want it to go that fast. So let's change that up. In order to change this, select your second keyframe. And then you're going to expand this box and where it says time, let's just change up the number. So uh, the more seconds you add in, the slower it'll go. So let's put in five seconds, for example. Now let's try it out. You'll notice how it's a lot more smooth and it seems more natural. Um, it just looks a lot better than going one second. Uh, but then again, it does depend on the way you want to use your cinematic. If you want it to go fast, then that's up to you. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create some random keyframes uh, to cinemate, you know, to um, make out the battle. So I'm just going to do some really wacky positions for the keyframes. And I'm just going to go kind of like in a revolution in a circle, if you want to put it that way. Uh, so add another one right here. Let's zoom in on this one. Say, like, we'll put one, like, right here. And then we'll... Um, so I'll just keep doing this until I go in like a circular pattern. Uh, say add in like maybe two more. And uh, that should be good. Okay, so actually let me just update that last one a little bit. Whoops, 
Um, I kind of did the wrong one, didn't I? Oh, whoops. That's all right. Let's start the first one down here then. That's all right. All right, so now what we're going to do is we have to adjust the time frames because if we preview it now, it takes only five seconds to get from here to the zero to one. But if we do from one to two, see how it goes extremely fast. This is because it's only taking one second between each frame. So now what we're going to do is we got to adjust each frame to make it seem more smooth. So um, I'm going to do this to all of them, and I'm going to do an increment of five every single time. I don't think it'll be very consistent the entire time, but it'll make it a lot more smooth than it actually is. Now, the annoying part about this editor is that you cannot see what you want to actually animate for the for your like cinematic camera. So, for example, if you wanted to like make the camera follow a truck or a convoy, what you have to do is just keep trying and adjusting the frames in the seconds to make it seem like it's actually moving perfectly. Um, and this is where it gets annoying because you can't test that out until you press start. And then once you, it's like, okay, I screwed up, then you have to redo it. And that gets really annoying sometimes. So uh, this takes a lot of time and effort to make this really good. Um, and uh, yeah, that should be good. We did up to 45 seconds. So this seems pretty good. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to move over to triggers and we're finally going to script this in. So if you hit the triggers, uh, you're going to add and insert a new one. So it's, I'm just going to call this camera. Now uh, you don't need any conditions, so you can skip right over that. And we're just going to use one command. And it should be under scene. Uh, and it's going to be called scenario. Okay, so once you click on scenario, the properties menu for a scenario should pop up. And uh, there's a lot of things here. I'm kind of going to go in a little detail for each one to give you a brief overview of what each does. Um, so let's start off with the messages. So the text. Um, this is useful for giving a brief background or any historical information on what's going on during the cinematic view. So if I typed in something, you know, it would bring me to the text browser and then when it shows up those black boxes at the top and bottom it would show the text at the black box on the bottom and then you can see it and read it uh, again this is only useful for kind of like um, like maybe to show your objective or whatnot um, next is sound sound is pretty much the same thing as text but as you know it just adds in sound so you can hear um, in the cinematic view uh, again if you expand it, it brings you to the sound commands and all that stuff and you can select some sounds now video to tell you the truth I do not know what this one does because as you could tell this one has no Dropbox uh, unlike the text and sound do I'm guessing it has to do with the files um, it's probably like a specific file format that you need and then you have to type it in I don't know I've never used it nor I never seen it used in a scenarios command uh, like I said if I figure it out I'll let you guys know, but for the most part, don't worry about this. You probably won't even have to worry about it. Um, but for the most part, we're going to work with the camera. Um, so all these extra options down here are about what we're going to actually be working with for the most part. So let's start off from the top, and let's start off with the name. This one is going to be the camera you select, so we only have one camera at the moment, and that's start in my case. So that's going to be the camera so it can set it up. So it follows the path that we just created. Um, the loop. Loop, as you can tell, you might already know what that does. It just loops it constantly, forever. Um, and you know what? Let's actually check that off. Because mine, my path that I set up is in a circular motion. So it kind of keeps revolving around the battlefield uh, every 45 seconds. So yeah, we'll, we can check that off. Um, not synced. Not synced is a little tricky. Uh, it's a little difficult to understand. It kind of like, it stops all the other in-game options from working. Pretty, pretty much like the camera will be working, but the other triggers will not. It's a little confusing. It doesn't sync the game with the camera, if you know what I mean. Um, you'd only use this for certain 
uh, things, like maybe if you want to pause it, I don't know. I don't really use it at all. Um, so don't really have to worry about it too much. Uh, the disable cancel, this is something you're going to want to use a lot. Um, if you check this on, if you put this on, then it's going to stop the player so they can't press the continue button. Um, more specifically, I'll refer to the skirmish in the Assault Squad if, or anything like that. Um, if you played a Men of War Assault Squad skirmish, you'll notice right in the beginning of the mission there's a... Uh, like a little cinematic view and then it'll say continue you can skip it right so it, this means you can skip it if it's off that means the player can skip through the the cinematic view that's good if it's like if the if you want the player to skip it or whatever if you want the player to watch it, the entire view of the video then you want to put this on that means that continue option will not be there um and yes we're going to do it for the this case of the video um, for the smooth begin and end, we're going to check these off. And the reason why is because what happens is this is, it kind of moves your current camera as its state, it moves it to the first keyframe. And same thing with smooth end, it moves your key, uh, your last movement with the camera to from the last keyframe. And you would never really use this for a beginning camera scene. You would use this for mainly the middle if you have a camera like set in the middle of your mission or your end of your mission. So pretty much like what I'm saying is if your camera set was pretty much what we just did going around in the circle, if my camera was all the way over here, instead of just automatically appearing at the first frame, it would move my camera slowly to the first frame instead. And same thing with the end. It would once it ends, it'll go back to the same position I was at. Again, you don't really use it for a beginning, mainly for like a middle mission um, or ending mission. Uh, the quant mode is, to tell you the truth, I don't really to know too much what it does, but I do know for a fact you want to keep this enabled. Um, for some reason, if you have it on en enabled, it just works the way, like, perfectly fine. If you have it on disable, it, like, makes the screen go black. I don't know the reason for it. I never really understood too much about it, but again, if I, if I figure that out, I'll let you guys know. I'm going to skip the events and triggers really quick. I'm just going to go to the store and do not restore. Um, for this purpose, we're going to put this on. We're going to put this on. And what these do is they start and end the camera in the locations of the keyframes. So, for example, kind of like with the smooth end and the smooth begin, um, when I press start, if my camera's right here, it's just going to automatically start on the first keyframe instead of moving my cursor slowly there. And you want to use this for most cases. If not, then you want to have the smooth in and smooth begin. Um, and finally, the forced auto complete. More than likely, for the most part, you always want to have this checked off. Uh, this pretty much just means it force completes the camera set. That's all it really does. Um, I rarely would never want this off if the only time I always the only time I've used it when it was off is when you have multiple scenario keyframes, uh, well, camera sets following each other after, like, after each other. Um, for the most part, you just want to keep this on if you are using one camera set. And for the events and triggers, all it's doing is if you put these, you can activate a trigger um, after the camera set is complete. Um, and with the cancels, if you can hit continue, then it'll uh, um, also activate these. So, um, and we should be all set. So uh, we'll hit OK, and that's it. We only needed one command, so let's test this thing out. So um, I know the, the camera's a little weird. I didn't get the best overall but this is just a little it's like I said it's all trial and error I have to fix it constantly over and over to get it a perfect cinematic view but for the most part it gets what it needs to get uh, in terms of looking at the battle and since I have this on loop it'll be doing this over and over until I hit finish Um, and yeah, that's really about it for this video. Um, so guys, um, oh yeah, one other thing before I end this. Um, 
Now, there's plenty of other ways to use the camera. This is just one brief overview of how to use the camera. So this is all about experimentation. I only used a very easy, simple way to do it. If I was to show you all the options and different ways to use the camera, I would be here for hours. So this is just a brief introduction to it. Uh, maybe in the future I'll do another video on more advanced camera movements and all that stuff. But um, for the most part, I just wanted to get a brief overview for this video. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, you know, concerns, uh, put them down below on the comment section on my channels, email, Facebook, all that stuff. I have all the links in the description. Um, if you liked it, favorite it, do that because that helps me out a lot. And um, guys, I've been, I know I haven't been posting too many videos, but I hope I'll be done like with my uh, special video that I've been working on. I've been working on a short film in uh, a Men of War Machinima, if you want to put it that way. So it's almost done. And I think you guys will really enjoy that when it's cool, when it's fully finished. So uh, I think it'll be really cool when it's done. So um, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.